Hello everybody, AJ Rising here, and today we're looking at how to upgrade Kubuntu 1504 to Plasma 5.3. Now I've got an article right here from OMG Ubuntu, came out on April 28th, and it talks a little bit about Plasma 5.3. Um, probably number one feature that is, uh, you know, it's going to be important to all of the KDE fans out there. 400 bug fixes, uh, you know, as as great as uh, KDE 5 series has been, there have been plenty of bugs. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's new, it's it's going to happen. Um, so the bug fix is uh, going to be a big deal for everybody. Besides that, uh, kind of scrolling through the article here, some of the uh, features we've got added, better power management, new battery applet, uh, new energy usage monitor, animated changes in screen brightness. Uh, this one's probably a big deal for the laptop users. Closing a laptop when an external monitor is connected no longer triggers suspend. This new behavior is called cinema mode and comes enabled by default but can be disabled. Better Bluetooth functionality, uh, trackpad configuration is now easier. Uh, some of uh, where I kind of lost my place. Uh, oh, right here. Uh, for the Plasma widget fans, there's new press and hold gesture. When enabled, this hides the settings handle that appears when on mouse over, instead making it only appear when long clicking on widgets. Also, several of the old plasmoid favorites are reintroduced. And that's probably a big one also because that was something that I really noticed in uh, not only my review of Kubuntu 1504, but some of the other uh, KDE distros that, uh, that were running 5.2. Um, a lot of the, the, uh, the plasmoids that I used to use, they either weren't available or full, full functionality was not available at that time. So, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we see some uh, improvement with that. So having said all that, let's do the upgrade. And in the article, they had all the instructions for upgrading by terminal. So we're basically just going to copy and paste. Let me drag the terminal over here. And basically what we're doing is adding the Kubuntu Backports PPA. And, you know, I've, I've always got to give the Kubuntu team credit for, for this Backports so that you can get, you know, all of your software upgraded to the latest, or at least all of the KDE software upgraded to the latest and greatest KDE. Um, you know, I wish Ubuntu would do, you know, something similar with the, with their uh, standard distribution. Oh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of distributions, in fact, would do something like this. So, um, two thumbs up to the Kubuntu team for for that. But, so we're gonna, just going to add this PPA here. Put that in. Put in our password. enter to continue do a sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get distribution upgrade Click enter All right, 226 packages upgraded, 41 newly installed, 5 to remove, 0 not upgraded. All right, after this operation, 13.2 megs of additional disk space will be used. Do you want to continue? Click yes, and just sit back and let it do its thing. So since this is probably going to take a while, I'm going to pause the video, and then we will come back after all this is installed and take a look at what we got. All right, we are back, and not only are we back, I'm recording this section of the video a day later because, to be quite honest, it took me a while to kind of dig around and find all of the changes that were made by upgrading to 5.3. Um, you know, since a lot of it was bug fixing, uh, you're you know you're not gonna 
you know pop open the desktop and say oh uh, yeah that uh, that's different right there so on some things it, it took a little while uh, especially the bug fixes now I did let me drag Firefox over here I did find uh, in the KDE community announcements uh, the complete change log for Plasma 5.3 and I will leave a link down below so that you can take a look at this um, because you know like I said a lot of it is bug fixes you can look through there see if uh, you know there's a particular bug or whatnot that was irritating you um, and uh, and see if it's been fixed or whatnot uh, besides that I kind of opened up some applications um, where there's been changes or, or additions and whatnot. Uh, when we talked about some of the plasma or plasmoids uh, or widgets, whatever you want to call them, that have been added back, one, and this real one isn't a big deal to me, but apparently it is to, for a lot of people because I found tons of articles about it, and it's this, uh, this uh, uh, cartoon strip widget. Uh, like I said, to me, not a big deal to have on on the desktop. Uh, and to be quite honest, I'm not a big widget person anyway. I pretty much like a clean desktop, and I don't want to see anything other than uh, my panel and uh, uh, you know my desktop background, I guess, and then whatever application I'm working with. But I know a lot of people do like having tons and tons of widgets and conkies and all that kind of stuff. So we've got this comic strip job right here. Um, and this is an old one that's basically just been added back, you know, updated so it plays nice with the uh, Plasma 5 series. So we've got that going on. And I, I went into the settings here. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that one right there. Click on the settings. And those are the comics that I added right there. You can go and click on new comics and scroll through the list. That uh, It takes a couple of seconds for that to populate. But scroll through the list that's listed there. Select comics, add them, and then decide if you want them selected. And then there's other settings you, know, you can show. Uh, show the comic title, identifiers, author, URL, that kind of stuff. So anyway, there's there's this one right here, and uh, this uh, system load monitor right here. Um, this one has been updated, so it once again works and plays nice with Plasma 5. So for those of you that want to keep tabs on uh, on your system, we've got that little job right there. And, and you don't have to use the circle type of graph. You They've got a uh, bar graphs and a compact bar graph as well so you can go with those you can tweak the colors as with everything in KDE it is very customizable uh, other things down here in uh, I pulled open the K info center uh, and you know we we're talking about the the uh, the better energy management earlier uh, you now have uh, energy information listed in your K info center so you can see uh, you know which applications are using up the most memory or not just not not necessarily just the most memory just the most energy so let's close that up there and for on the laptops now I'm on my desktop right now so I really can't play with any of these settings but you now have a touchpad settings section here so you can go and make all kinds of tweaks uh, to your touchpad setting it up just the way you like it which like we said hey that's a hallmark of uh, that's a hallmark of KDE being able to tweak everything uh, let's see where what is next oh yeah the uh, media center now now this is um, I guess probably you should consider it an alpha preview. Um, definitely not ready for prime time. They even tell you so in uh, uh, on uh, in KDE's description. But there is now a plasma media center, and 
uh, um, before I open it, I'll tell you right now, it, it's been very glitchy, but, you know, it's kind of a preview, see, uh, you know, what's coming up next. So let me open that up. And for whatever reason, I cannot get it to open up on my main monitor. It always insists on opening up on the secondary monitor. And uh, as well as that, it always opens up in full screen. And as much as I tweak it, I can't get it to open up in a window. So let me put it in a window, bring it back over here, and boom, it's up to full screen. But I kind of like the, the way this is laid out. You know, here's music that is stored in uh, my music folder, pictures that are in picture folder and then come down here these are videos that are stored in my video folder unfortunately since it always pops to full screen and maybe this is why it always popped up on my main screen I don't have any toolbars or anything around here to minimize it or shrink it down so and you can see barely touch it and it it's right back to, to uh, full screen again so I guess it just likes being full screen I don't know Let me go and I'm gonna just close it um, like I said it's really glitchy right now but uh, you know I like where it's going along with plasma 5.3 we get a whole slew of KDE applications version 15.04 and uh, you know, some of them are kind of, eh, um, you know, not no big deal or whatnot. Because there's a, some more KDE games. There's a K, K Hangman, which is you know the old old uh, Hangman game updated and, and added to KDE. Um, go and open this up full screen, and we'll take a look at some of these others here. We've got rocks, um, and some of these I haven't really looked at yet. So Rocks aims to be a graph theory IDE for helping professors to show the results of a graph algorithm and also helping students to do the algorithm. So we've got that one. We've got Cantor is a front end to powerful mathematics and statistics package. Cantor integrates them into the KDE platform and provides a nice worksheet based graphical user interface. And K compare or compare, I guess I guess is how you say it. Um, GUI front end program enables differences between source files to be viewed and merged. Now here's the one that has me really stoked, and that is that Kden Live is now officially part of the KDE application stack. Now I've been using Kden Live, you know, really ever since I started this whole YouTube thing. Uh, you know, I tried my my first couple of videos. I tried using some other video editors, but you know, real quick, I got on Kden Live and found it's 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 uh, you know the best balance of ease of use while at the same time having uh, lots and lots of features available. So, you know, what what exactly does it mean that it's part uh, an official KDE application? Well, they talk a little bit about it on the Kden Live website, and here it says they benefit from the KDE infrastructure, which means less worries for the developers. Uh, in other words, the developers can focus on just development of the applications. Um, so we next thing down, we stick to KDE application release schedule, which means one big bug fix release every month, one feature improved version every four months. And, you know, whereas previously it was kind of on a, uh, well, when we get it done, we get it done, however long it takes, that sort of thing. Um, so... And it could just kind of reading a little farther, it says, you know, that's a big change from previous random releases every year or so. This is possible because the KDE team takes care of the release, not the developers. So once again, the developers can focus on developing. 
They're now using KDE's bug tracker. They benefit from KDE's build servers and team, which means that you may in the future see Mac OS and Windows versions. And, and why this is important for us Linux users, while we may not care that somebody on Windows or on Mac OS can use Kden Live, by expanding the Kden Live user base, that will translate into more funds when they're out seeking funding to do more development. So, you know, and, and of course, more development dollars, more development, um, you know, in the long run, even us Linux users will benefit from that. Uh, let's see, what else? We're now part of the Google Summer of Code. We have adopted the KDE application numbering scheme. That's why the change to uh, version 15.04.0. And so what else we got here? Oh, KDE telepathy. Now, let me go and open that. And I believe, yes, the, the, the page is still under construction. But just as a general description, KDE Telepathy provides a suite of applications for full instant messaging experience. Now, I will be quite honest, I am not much into instant messaging in any way, shape, or form. So, I am not a good person to review this kind of thing. So, um, I will just leave a link down below to, uh, to this page so that you can reference it and, uh, and take a look at the changes and whatnot. So that's the stuff that's been added, fixed and uh, tweaked and whatnot. Um, so let me talk about the stuff that I was hoping to see that I did not see. Uh, number one on the list, we're still missing a lot of uh, widgets, plasmoids, whatever you want to call them, that you know I think are important for completing the whole uh, plasma experience, I guess you could call it. Uh, things that are holding a lot of people back from upgrading to Plasma 5 from, from uh, KDE 4. Uh, number one on the list, we still don't have the home run menu. I know a lot of people that that is the, uh, the, the, the home run launcher is what they like to use. Um, you know, it gives you somewhat similar to the Unity Dash. Uh, I know a lot of people like it, and it's still not available for uh, KDE 5 series. So there's that one. Uh, another big one is uh, integration with calendar. Now, when you go and click on your time here, you're, you get a calendar that pops up, but we still don't have integration with you know, if you're set up to to integrate with uh, Google Calendar, or or even uh, you know stuff that you've just saved on the calendar on the, your desktop, you still don't have that integration, and, and that's something that at least me personally, I'm really looking for. I want to be able, I don't want to have to open up my personal information manager and go to calendar so that I can look at my calendar events. I want to just click on that time and see my, my, uh, all of my calendar events. Uh, you know, big one for me. Um, while there have been bug fixes, I did manage to crash the, uh, the plasma display. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I, it was opening too many widgets on the same monitor. I had about five different widgets open already. I had a couple of applications open, and then I went to start adding more widgets, and boom, crashed the whole thing. Now, granted, a lot of people aren't going to run that many widgets, but you may. Um, so... Uh, you know, so there, there's still some bugs as far as uh, the whole Plasma desktop experience goes. Um, but it is improved. Well, that is about it for this uh, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. As always, leave comments, questions, all that kind of stuff down below. Uh, I will try to get to questions uh, and comments and all that kind of stuff as, as soon as possible. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Love to have you following. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Thanks a lot.